Good evening, everyone. Sorry for the delay. Just want to thank everyone for taking the time to join us this evening. Uh, you are here with the University of Miami uh, online team. Uh, we are here today with um, uh, with Leslie Fitzpatrick, which is a recent uh, or who is a recent graduate of our Master's in Sport Administration program online. Leslie's here to tell us a little bit about his experience as an online student here at the University of Miami. Um, I will be your moderator, so if you have any questions, I will field those questions as they come in. Um, if the question is relevant to the, um, the current uh, slide or where we are in the presentation, I will um, take care of that question at the time. If it's something that we've passed um, passed on about or something we will get to, um, we'll either address it when we get there or at the end of the webinar in our Q&A session. So, Leslie, is that you? Yeah, that's me. Okay, all right, perfect. Sounds a little windy out there. Are, are you working? Yeah, I'm on the field right now. I have a session with my academy going on, so uh, they're, they're just going through a little shooting drill, and I'm kind of just monitoring from the side. Okay, I understand. Well, we won't keep you too long, so we'll go ahead and um and and get started with the webinar. So again, yeah. thank you everyone for joining. Um, today we'll be discussing um the online learning experience. We're going to go over the motivation to pursue um an advanced education here with us at the University of Miami. We're going to talk about uh the collaborative learning experience online. Um, Leslie will give us his experience uh with faculty members and the classmates. Um, he'll tell us a little bit how he's been able to apply some of the theories that he's learned throughout the program. Um, we'll also dive a little bit into a classroom demonstration and then we will go into our Q&A session. All right, so we'll continue to proceed. So um, what is your motivation to pursue a master's degree? So before you um, you dive into this world, you have to decide, you know, what is, what, why do you need a master's degree? For some people, it's to advance their careers. For some people, it's a personal um, decision. For others, they need it to help them run their own business. So Leslie, in your case, can you tell us why you decided to, um, to pursue an advanced degree? Uh, it's a little bit a uh, combination of pretty much all of those things. You know, I had uh, I'd done my undergrad degree um, and finished back in 2001, and I had my professional soccer career. And then as I was um, as I was looking to go into my post playing career, um, I started just with the coaching side of it, and then kind of bridged that into the administrative side and within that, you know, I kind of was looking at career advancement opportunities, um, probably in the professional environment, uh, because at the point in time I've been doing a lot of stuff with youth soccer, but within my, my actual job, I already had to do a lot of admin work. And so I figured it would, really would give me a, a better understanding of, especially some of the facets of sports administration that I didn't really grasp for my playing um my playing time so stuff like sponsorships and marketing um the legal side of it you know i'd always kind of worked on my own contracts and stuff but kind of seen uh, um some of the aspects that i didn't really have a full grasp on i said that would give me a chance to advance my career um additionally you know as a coach it's uh you have that one job and it's it's a high demand market a lot of experience and stuff but if you can get into the front office, it also expands your um, your opportunities. So I'd look for that, and I'd always been interested in maybe becoming a GM at one point or um, some sort of vice president or presidential level within the organization, and this degree would give me that opportunity. Okay. All right. That sounds great. Um, so it sounds like you have been able to um, to apply um, you know, what you've gained from your program into your career field. Now, in Leslie's case, he was already working in a sport field. So I just want to let everyone know, sometimes you do need an advanced degree to maybe, you know, change careers, and that's okay as well. Um, that's quite all right. You know, you'll definitely gain the skills that you need to transition into a, a new role or even a new industry. So keep that in mind as well. So thank you so much, Leslie. It seems like, um, you know, your decision uh, was well warranted and uh, it looks like it was a good choice. So we'll continue on. So far, no questions at this time. So we'll, we'll continue on with the webinar. So, Leslie, um, as you as I can tell right now, it seems like you're pretty busy. 
So um, one of the, the, the things that students always ask is, you know, why did you choose online instead of a traditional classroom setting? Yeah, well, exactly for that purpose, because, um, you know, it's it, it always been a, a challenge to, to balance once you get into, and even while I was playing, because of the amount of travel that we did, um, it's always to balance a conventional classroom setting degree with um, with with the profession as it was. And so the online version, I'd, I'd never really done online learning before, so I was a little bit wary of doing it. And I'd been approached by a couple of schools to take on the task, and for a few years I'd been delaying. But then once the University of Miami, I saw that program, um, and I'd been a big fan of the U from since I was younger, actually thought about going there for undergrad, but they didn't have a, an NCAA men's team, um, so I actually ended up going to Columbia instead. But I'd always been a big fan of the university. Um, I have a lot of family in Miami, coming from the Caribbean. And so once I saw the degree and it looked, and I, and I kind of did some research on the program, it seemed like a good fit. So once I, um, I kind of got a grasp of how I would deal with the time management aspect of it, uh, given my given my workload, you know, I'm on the field a lot of times. I work nights and weekends, and so the flexibility of the online is what was really appealing to me. And so with that, I just decided that you know I I just kind of jump in head first and see how it went. And after the first course or two, I was able to get a, a full grasp of what I got a full grasp of what I wanted to to do and how to be able to manage it. And I think it was a, a really good decision for me. I think for for busy professionals and in, in life as, as it is today, uh, online learning is probably going to be the way forward for a lot of people um, to, to get their educational goals at least. Very good point. Um, and I agree with that. I think in, in today's society, it's such a high paced society and such a, a high demand. Um, it's it's difficult for individuals, especially professionals, to, to commit to having to sit in a classroom for an extended period of time um, to, to further their education. Um, the online component um, allows students you know, to, it, it, it creates um, an availability in two different ways. It creates an availability in the sense that if you are not geographically located in Coral Gables, Florida, you can still attend the University of Miami. And also, in, in the case of, of, um, of Leslie, if you are a professional athlete and your career takes you on the road quite a bit, um, you have that availability where you can take your materials, you can take your laptop on the road with you and still fulfill your academic um, obligations as well. So, um, you know, like Leslie is saying, the, the online component makes uh, career, you know, not necessarily career, but um, your educational goals a little bit more achievable. So, perfect. I'm, I'm glad to hear that that worked out for you, Leslie. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Uh, and like I said, you know, the flexibility of the degree, the fact that you can uh, you can actively, you know, I mean, there's a there's a component to it where you have to be in tune with what the other students are doing, of course, in terms of discussion posts and like all of that. But there's still a flexibility within when you get your stuff in. And, and for me, again, with my um, my workload, nights and weekends. Um, with my busy part, so I would probably get a lot of the work done during the day. Uh, I get my discussions in early in the week because I knew by the time the weekend rolls around, I'd be on the field a lot of traveling, and so um, that flexibility I think was really, really, really good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Now, here's the thing: um, you, like myself, has, have had the opportunity to attend school on two different levels. I've been a part of a traditional program as well as an online program. So I'm very yeah. familiar with, with that I, dynamic. Now, can you tell us what your experience was like in terms of your classroom interactions um, you know, with your classmates? Yeah, I think, um, you know, I was lucky, I say, because I actually had a, a great experience with the class that we had. We became pretty close. Um, you know, we helped each other a lot. I think there were a lot of us that were going through that were going through the same types of things in terms of transitioning in careers or trying to find that way to advance our careers and stuff. And um, the class was a bit older, so a lot of us had been out of 
university or um, schooling for a while, and we had a lot of active professionals. So we, we, we understood the challenges that we faced. Um, they were kind of similar for a lot of us. And with that, uh, I think just the fact that we, we had so much in common, it really bonded us. And so, you know, outside of just the classroom, um, sessions and stuff, we exchange phone numbers, you know, sometimes we get on, on a WhatsApp, in a WhatsApp group, or, you know, do Skype calls, or whatever it was, to be able to coordinate stuff, and then, you know, when there were difficulties, if somebody was facing a difficulty or a challenge in a certain area, I think it was very easy to reach out to someone else in the class, and, um, you know, a group of, a group of four or five of us um, became pretty, pretty tight, and, um, you know, by I had I was really lucky as well because again because of my schedule and traveling and stuff I was able to actually go down to the university um, on campus a couple of times during the degree and during that time I was able to meet one or two of the students who had actually been living in Miami or had been down there as well and then by the time graduation rolled around um, I knew about four or five of my classmates personally had met them in person so I was really lucky with that and I think it's um, I think you know once you once you kind of reach out to to the students and 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 your group and everybody kind of realizes they face similar challenges. I think that bonds the group and and it helps in terms of the whole um, experience. I totally agree. Um, so I just want to piggyback on what Leslie just said. Um, one of the things we do do here at the University of Miami is we we set it up in such a way that you have to. Uh, communicate with your classmates. You know, it, it's something that we encourage. Online learning is is difficult um, in itself, so it's very important for um, students to have um, peers in their classroom that they can go to because your your classmate is going to be your first resource before anything else. Before you contact the professor for assistance, you may want to reach out to your classmate, especially if they're in a group, um, to see if they can assist you. Uh, with a question that you you know you may be uh, having difficulty with, um, so that is correct in a sense um, you know in terms of how you uh, collaborate and how you interact with your classmates. Another thing that we do here is we set up groups within your Blackboard um, uh, setting so that you can get to know your classmates based on whether it's about your career interest or career level or academic interests. Um, there are groups that you can join uh, in Blackboard. Um, you know that this way you're a little bit more um, social and you're able to network as you go through your program. And sometimes, keep in mind, students, you know, classes overlap, and you may have a student from a different session in your class, and that's important to get to know those people because that's a wider network for you here. Um, the University of Miami Alumni Network is about 180,000 different students, so that's really important for you to um, to collaborate and, and kind of intermingle as you are within the, uh, the classroom experience. So really good to hear that, Leslie. Um, let's see, we're going to continue to uh, to progress on here, and how about some of the things that you, you learned from the faculty? Do you have any takeaways that you can share with us, you know, some experiences or, or any insight that, you, that you've gained into your particular industry just from, uh, you know, personal conversations or even, uh, you know, classroom conversations with your, with your faculty members? Yeah, um, you know, again, with the faculty, I, I was lucky because I was able to, to get down to campus a couple times. Um, so I was able to meet Professor Dees um, early on, um, and then uh, and a couple of the other professors. And so I think that interpersonal relationship with them, and you know, getting to that personal touch with them, really helped me as well. In terms of you know, it's, it's great to have the online thing, but always meeting someone in person and sharing sharing that personal touch. Um, you know, helped me, and then they were always accessible. They were always, you know, I think they understood some of the challenges we faced as, as online students, and so they would set their office hours when you can call in, and a few of them actually gave you their personal numbers to reach out to them if you were going through some struggles. And I think the faculty was, was top notch. You know, we had I think five or six of them through all the time. Professor Jessup um, was was really helpful as well, and then I was able to to do the um, when she did the, it slipped in my mind right now. Um, not the convention, but the uh, I forget what it is. <laughs> I don't remember. 
Um, but yeah, I, the, the professors, uh, they were there as the people in the way that they helped us and, and understand what we went through and they always made themselves available. Um, when we had struggles, you know, with the assignments, I remember in our financial class, um, we had to reach out to Dr. Wisman a little bit to help us with our group. And, you know, he, was, he was giving us constant feedback. As long as you reached out to him, he was always trying to help. And by the end of it, I think everybody had a truly strong grasp of um, the assignment. Whereas when we started, I think we were all kind of lost. Um, you know, so I, I think this is one of the best faculties that you could probably have. Um, both on a personal level and in terms of in terms of online learning, just because of the accessibility mm -hmm. and their willingness to help um, throughout the whole process, and they seem like they're a very close knit bunch as well. You know, when I went down there and met them, they talked about going to UM football games together and tailgating and all of that. And I think mm -hmm. that that natural bond that they have it, it translates to us as a as a as a class as well. And so I think that united our bond as well because the fact that our faculty was so close. Perfect. Actually, that, that actually leads to, um, uh, you touched on it, but I'll go ahead and pitch the question to you so you can give us your experience with that. A uh, question came in that says, how accessible are the faculty members um, when assistance is needed? So uh, what, would you, what would be your take on that? Um, yeah, like I said, I, you know, the, the, the thing with the faculty that's that's amazing in terms of how accessible they are is that they don't only do the online courses, they're actually doing the on-campus courses and, and some of them are doing undergrad classes plus the grad school classes plus the online. So they have a they have a full plate but yet still, you know, with some of them it was easier to access them during their assigned office hours. Like they would say, you know, for sure that's the time that you can really also reach out to them through the course messages. Um, you can leave emails for them personally, and like I said, one or two of them even actually gave you their own personal phone numbers so that if you really had an issue or whatever it is, you can reach out to them almost 24 7. Um, I think the, the longest that you would go probably without having access is a day or two. Like, you know, they said, all right, maybe if you leave a message in course messages, I might not be able to get back to you for a couple of days, or they were very open leaving uh, messages for us. Okay, I, I'll be. Um, I remember um, Dr. Malene had to go uh, out of town for like five or six days and she would just post something being like, you know, for these five or six days, I might not be as accessible because I'll be out of town. But if you do need me, this is my phone number. And so I, I think they really went above and beyond in that regard um, in terms of granting accessibility to themselves. That's actually pretty good to hear as well. So Leslie touched on one thing that's pretty important. Um, if we all think back to our undergrad days when, um, you know, if we needed to see the professor, we'd have to camp out in front of their office. Um, that's no longer the case here, especially if you're taking an online course here at the University of Miami. Every week, um, each professor ensures that they're available for a couple of hours, um, which is the designated office hours that Leslie mentioned, uh, to be accessible specifically for online students. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, the, the professors will be available every The only thing that they ask is, you know, come prepared. Make sure you've already completed your reading. Uh, not only are you, you coming with a question, but you're coming with some insight uh, into the subject matter so you can have a pretty thorough discussion with the professor about the topic that you're, you're inquiring about. So don't worry about professor availability. That's something that's already been laid out uh, in advance for you. So, Leslie, as we continue to um, to uh, to progress here, can you tell us, um, you know, what kind of things did you take away from your classmates? Were you able to gain from their experiences throughout your program? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I think you know that was that that's also another, um, I guess, benefit to this type of program where you're interacting with a bunch of students who have different skill sets, who have um, different backgrounds uh, and, and you know, like for instance, uh, we had a couple of them who were into sales already, so, you know, they had a, a certain expertise in that, or there were some who were into marketing, there were some, uh, you know, who there was one class where we had a lawyer on board, so he was able to help in terms of the, you know, the legal class and stuff, and so each, um, each 
step along the way, you're able to take a lot from your classmates and interact with them and, and use their expertise in certain fields. And for me, you know, it was really rewarding because they leaned on me a lot as a as an ex-professional athlete who had been kind of in the trenches for a lot of the things that we are going through, even though I might not have understood the nitty-gritty of each, uh, each and every part of the industry. You know, I think they just kind of lean on me a lot to ask, you know, well, what's your perspective on this? Or, you know, how did this work when you were a player? And how do you see it working now in your job as, a, you know, as a general manager for youth academy or as a, you know, director right. of a youth academy? You know, or what, what was your take? You know, how did the organization, the professional organization in the MLS, how did they do that? You know, what was your role within marketing, that, you know, as a like if you have to go out and do appearances and all of that. So I think everyone brought us based on the fact that the degree was a lot of older professionals and not a lot of students who had just finished um, undergrad and went straight into the degree. So there was a you know a lot of interaction and um, I certainly um, I certainly leaned on a lot of my classmates and, and took a, took away a lot from them. Perfect, perfect. Actually, that's that's exactly what we want to hear. Um, to piggyback on, on what Leslie said, one of the key components of our application process is to take a look at the student's um, experience. And we, we definitely uh, make that a big factor in our application uh, process because we want to make sure uh, through your experience that you were able to give back to your classmates as well. Um, so, you know, more than just uh, sitting down and actually taking in or absorbing the information from a textbook or from your professor, we want, you know, individuals across every industry to have an opportunity to contribute to the enrichment of their peers. So that's really important. Um, and as Leslie said, you know, his experience as, you know, a director of a youth league or, um, you know, a professional athlete, that went a long way because in, in that regard, uh, classmates will look to him for his experience uh, from those industries. So that's really good to hear. Thank you so much, Leslie. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, uh, <laughs> the, the, guy, the, the, the guys and classmates were so awesome. I, I just remember, you know, kind of being humble at a, a <laughs> like in, in terms of receiving one assignment and I remember we had to like pick out somebody to, um, you know, as a, a mentor, or, um, you know, a professional athlete or something in that area to ask them in terms of leadership and stuff. And one of my classmates chose me, chose me. And the professor said that's the first time that it ever happened where someone chose their own classmate. But I mean, it was just stuff like that that you can't replicate and. And it, it, it's rewarding and humbles you a little bit to, to know that you can impact your classmates that much and, and that they have that type of impact on you as well. Yeah, Leslie, that's, that's really impressive. I mean, and that's true, you know, if you have someone that has the experience right in front of you, you know, why pick, you know, an individual that you can't, you know, tap them on the shoulder and, and, and ask that question have, and have, a, you know, have that accessibility to someone uh, you know, that has the experience that you're looking for or has done the things that you're aiming to do. So that's really cool, man. That's really good to hear. Thank you for sharing. Yes. And then um, I guess, you know, a follow-up to that from your experience in the classroom um, and I guess your experiences with the faculty as well, can you tell us a little bit about some of the things you've taken away from the program um, that you've, able to, you've been able to practically apply to your profession on a daily basis. Yeah, like I said, there was um, a lot of aspects to to the degree. Um, I remember I think we went through uh, ten or so courses. Um, a lot of aspects of the degree where I didn't have uh, a firm grip on, you know, how that um, I didn't have a firm grip on, on how it all works and the mechanics of it. So. In particular, for me, I would say the, the marketing um, and advertising component of it, I've really been able to, you know, sponsorship. Because for us, uh, I'm based in Toronto um, most of the time, uh, between Toronto and Buffalo, and in youth soccer, you know, you, you kind of go about sponsorships where, okay, you're going to ask, you know, a local small business to, you know, give a, a couple hundred bucks here or there to help out, you know, help with uniforms and all of that. And, um, you know, it really taught me about like looking at the bigger picture and engagement and then seeing how you can appeal to them by the way that you can 
give back to them, you know, and, and you think, all right, and you support well, it's not, it's not like they're going to get a lot of value from, like, TV rights or, you know, the, the ability to advertise um, in certain ways, but there were other ways that they could engage them and they can build out the sponsorship. And so, like, that part of the degree really helped me um, add a, a background in economics, um, so the financial part, uh, that kind of intrigued me as well. You know, we looked at uh, how you build build out how how you build a stadium and a project kind of like that. If you're looking at a new stadium, and that was really really impressive for me to see. And I think particularly when you look at the um, MLS structure, if that's a structure that I get into, um, you know, where they're all looking at trying to build these new specific stadiums. I think that would help me a lot. In uh, that part of the degree would help me a lot having covered some of that. Um, the legal aspect again, as I said, you know, learning about some of the um, the legalities, especially in the NCAA, because I've also looked at right, if I go into the NCAA, say as an athletic director or something along those lines, kind of understand, you know, as a student athlete, you go and you play and you just try to stay, <laughs> you, you try not to break the rules, but you don't really understand the rules of the essence of the I think across the board it really expanded my horizon and, and gave me a lot of value in terms of where I can take um where I can take the next steps in my career, you know, now whereas before I probably was kinda pigeonholed in okay, so he was a soccer player and um, you know, he's a coach. Now I think for me I'm just, We, we lost you for a second, Leslie. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. We can hear you back now. Okay. So while you were you were um, speaking, a question came in. I just said, you know, were the professors able to offer you insight into the industry in terms of, you know, how to break through any, any problems within the industry? Yeah, they were amazing, man. They, 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 the professors were... You know, I, I guess one of the biggest things as well with with the degree that I thought would be would be um, huge for me is, and, and you kind of alluded to it before, is the network that you get. You know, the the UM alum, um, the UM alumni, and then also uh, you know just from the professors' experience in the industry, that network that they have, and and I think they were they were really really helpful in, in especially for me. You know, in terms of Outreach. They're like, you know, if you want to break in, if you want to try to get with the new uh, soccer team that David Beckham's bringing out, or if you, you know, if you want to talk to the teams in Fort Lauderdale or something in the MLS or you know at the collegiate level, they definitely said, hey, you know, we'll make a phone call, we'll reach out to to anyone you want to, um, and we'll help you with that. So I think you know having their network um, be accessible to you is one of the most invaluable things that you can get from the degree and, and not just their network as professors but also the other UM alum um and other alums who might have crossed paths with them. Um maybe not necessarily from, from UM but also just being a part of the industry um through through their outreach they they're able to access that for you. Okay, pretty cool. And I gotta say, Leslie, that that's really cool. Um, you are not the only student that that you know have mentioned this. Actually, there have been a, a couple of students, um, current as well as graduates, um, that have said you know professors are helping them overcome you know obstacles in many different ways. Um, you know whether it be understanding a particular. Uh, I guess facet of an industry and helping them, you know, break ground and moving forward, um, especially for those who are transitioning into a particular industry. So that's really good to hear. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think um, you know, for me, like I said, uh, having that huge soccer background and and all that, it, it was easy to get pigeonholed into that particular industry. Um, but the degree kind of expanded beyond that and, and I remember even in, in my leadership profile I was able to to do one um on the on the Buffalo Bills and I was able to talk to the quarterback Tyra Taylor and, and to the um quarterback coach at that time um as oh, part wow. of my yeah as part of my leadership profile and then actually uh, I talked to um 
Anthony Lynn, who was um, one of the one of the coordinators at that time, and now he just I think went on to become a head coach for one of the teams. So I mean, just in terms of that, like the degree is giving you that chance to to reach out to to people like that and and expand. You know, now you have that personal relationship with some of these people even in a different sport that might help you in the future if I wanted to branch into basketball or, or football or, you know, another major sport, like, you know, that type of network is also open to me. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. That's that's impressive. All right, so so we're we're, we're trucking on. I guess um, the last thing we want to discuss today is, you know, how did you manage your time as you were going through your program? I mean, you're, you're working now. You're on site now. Um, so how did you think, um, you know, you did with your time management? Was it, is it something you think is, is achievable for others? Yeah, I think I think that that's probably one of the biggest questions in, in any of these uh, webinars or, or any of the, the outreach stuff that I've done for the youth. Um, you know, a lot of people ask about that time management component. And I was lucky because, from a very young age, I had to be good with time management just based on um, soccer and school and, and then even in university having to have a job. So I always had to balance kind of two or three things at a time. And so I had to really hone my time management skills from a young age. And that really helped me in terms of this degree because without proper time management, I think it becomes a challenge. Um, just because, like you said, you have your regular stuff going on in everyday life. You know, a lot of, as I said, a lot of the, the classmates were older and had families, so you have to balance that as well. You know, you balance your regular profession, your family, um, then your school work. It can, it can catch up to you pretty quick. And, you know, every week the deadlines are there. You know, we have like a Tuesday, Thursday deadline, um, usually in terms of discussion and responses. Um, then we'd have probably assignments that we do at the end of the week, sometimes quizzes and stuff. Uh, and if you if you manage your time um, properly, I think it becomes seamless. Uh, you know, over time it becomes a really seamless process. And what you tend to find is there are a lot of people that fall into the same type of schedule as you are. So for me, like say if we had a, a Tuesday discussion post, I would get a lot of my reading done for the week. Um, on a Sunday, a Sunday night or a Monday morning, uh, early in the week, so I would make my discussion post uh, early. You know, by Monday night, I wanted to be done with my discussion post for Tuesday, and then if the response was due by Thursday, again by you know by by Tuesday night, Wednesday, once people had set theirs in, I would try to get mine in by then. Um, and then so by Thursday, Friday, it would just be a matter of responding to anyone that responded to me. And because I got all of my reading done early in the week, it was then for like quizzes and stuff like that. Again, I could take it, you know, earlier because I knew once the weekend hit, um, I was on the field, you know, probably 10, 11 hours on weekends uh, and then having to, you know, sometimes care at my kids or, you know, other activities or travel. So I kind of fell into a schedule where mornings worked well for me a, a couple hours in the morning. Um, before I went into the office, and then once my day was done, I, I'm, I'm kind of a night owl, so once my day is done, um, on the field at 10, and I get home and do some personal hours, so then I try to do a couple, you know, like an hour to a reading at night, and so that was how I kind of fit my schedule in, and, and I would do my post kind of just before my regular work day started, and I had a flexible schedule the time, right, because a lot of people would be in a 9 to 5. My my job wasn't a 9 to 5. It, it's more like, a, you know, afternoon to evening loaded where, like, 2, 3 in the afternoon, that's where, where it gets really busy until 10 or 11 at night. So I would try to get all my stuff in. And then some people really appreciate that because if they're in that regular 9 to 5 mode or whatever it is, they would have they would have um, content to be able to respond to or whatever it is when they got off of work, you know, rather than everybody waiting until a nine to five hour was done and then everybody kind of fit it in at that point in time. So I think what you tend to find is, you know, as, as people's schedules kind of evolve, you find a few classmates who might be along your, your timeline and, and that works. And then you find others who, uh, you know, at their own timelines and, and they kind of mix and match with each other. So, but I think time management is one of the most important components in, in terms of being successful in the degree. 
Yeah, that's that's really good to know. As a matter of fact, you already t you touched on something that was um that was uh, pretty interesting. You, you are correct. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, it, it, and it works in in different ways as well. The time zones impact um, the work schedule as well as just the, the nature of your profession. So you are correct. It's it's really refreshing when you log in in the evening. Uh -huh and you find that someone in a different time zone or several people in different time zones have already posted so now there's content there for you to work with for you to respond to and have healthy discussions on whatever topic is at hand for that week so that's 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 a different perspective and that's really good to hear um, if anyone has ever taken an online class you know we're all familiar with that dynamic um, where there, there is something that the professor wants to have on the table and have it in an open discussion. Um, and it's, it's important for the professor as well to log in and to be able to see your work and respond to it, you know, during his work day and then um, can continue on to touch bases with others throughout the day. So that's really good. Um, I think what Leslie was saying for the most part is in his sense he knew there was a gap of availability where he could get some work done and he took advantage of that because his day was more so backloaded um, at the end of his day where he's super busy as opposed to you know everyone else who who kind of you know winds up at the end of the day into their their academics he's actually finished so really good to hear um, let's continue on um, at this point, Leslie, I think I think you're all set um, for the most part these were all questions that we faced from different applicants or inquiries as we uh, we go through the program. Um, I just want to let everyone know that's on the call that we're always here for you. This is actually a picture of the team of academic advisors as well as um, uh, enrollment advisors that are here for your support. Um, we are here um, all the time. In fact, we also have IT service members that are available 24-7, 365 to help our students as they progress through their program. Um, Leslie, um, it looks like we're, we're pretty much at the end of the um, the webinar here. We were going to do a, um, a classroom walkthrough, but I just don't think time is uh, allowing us to do that at this time. Um, so far, we've gotten a few questions, and the, the, the great thing is as we went through the webinar, Leslie, you actually covered what those questions were um, as you're, you know, throughout your dialogue. So thank you so much. Um, Leslie, you want to, uh, you know, wish everyone the best of luck for you before you sign off? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, as always, thanks for having me. It's like I, I think um, one of the biggest things is because this degree has been so valuable to me, I feel, I feel um, it's really important for me in any way to give back, you know, and to try to help others who are interested in it. And uh, I think that it's something that can really propel you in your career in the future. Um, so best of luck to everyone that's going to embark on it or if you've just started or, you know, that you're thinking about it because I think it's something that can become really positive for you moving forward. Um, like I said, don't be afraid to lean on each other, to lean on your professors. Um, they're there as resources and, you know, we have amazing faculty at UM that are willing to help along the way. And, um, you know, I think I think it, it, the table's set for you to be able to be successful in the way that the program is designed. So um, best of luck. I think all of you will have a lot of success moving forward. And even, you know, in your time, I, I always say if you need to reach out to me, you know, my, my you can access my phone number or email or whatever it is from uh, any of the any of the staff or you know um, advising team, and I'm always there to help and and to, yeah. and to give any advice or yeah, however. That's you right, know. Leslie. Yeah, that's you're, a big you're, a big thing to me. Yeah, you're part of the alumni core now, so we definitely yeah. will reach out to you. <laughs> Um, but before yeah. we let you go, um, you've been pretty busy throughout the call. Um, can you just explain to everyone where you are and exactly what's happening? I think they're kind of curious as to what's going on. Yeah, so um, so I am I I am the technical director and general manager of a of a youth soccer academy in Toronto, and then I I, I have my own personal academy down in Buffalo, New York. Um, that's about. 30 to 40 kids, and so on. Uh, typically, I'm in Toronto uh, five or six days a week, and down in Buffalo a couple of days a week. I come down and I try to run um, some sessions for the kids down here. In in Buffalo, it's more like some extra training for the kids that are on teams in Toronto. It's their actual three or four days a week uh, training 
um, to try to get them to the next level. You know, it's an elite level program where it's kids that are interested in trying to get scholarships, kids that are interested in trying to go um, to the professional ranks. Um, and then we also have a, a semi-professional team in Toronto as well that we just launched last year. Um, so it gets it gets busy, it gets hectic. We have one kid that um, went out to during the 16 years old and, and a professional club interested in signing him and he's leaving next week for that. So um, for me, like I said, it, it, just like this degree, you know, I, I got so much out of this game and I've been blessed to have so many opportunities in life out of the game. And, and so I thought one of the best ways to to honor that was to pay it forward and to give back. And so that's how I kind of started in youth soccer. Um, and as I move forward, you know, I, I do have ambitions to maybe go to the professional level in terms of, um, you know, admin or in terms of admin or, um, or coaching. And so this is just one of the stepping stones for me. And so I have, I have these kids now who are all over me about coaching and when we're going to start and when we're going to play. So it's good. And, you know, I take the time out to do this uh, any time that I can. Hey, man, thank you so much for taking the time to help us out today. We really appreciate it. And we'll definitely be leaning on you in the future. So thank you so much for joining us, Leslie. Um, thank you, everyone, for logging in. Um, for those of you uh, who weren't able to make the webinar, we are going to email out the link so you will get this webinar. Um, also, uh, if you have any questions about the Sport Administration Program or any other program uh, here at Online, feel free to um, fill out an inquiry at www.miami.edu forward slash online and we will get an employment advisor to be in touch with you as soon as possible. So thank you everyone, have a great evening and uh, be safe. Alright, thanks for having me again, Alright, Leslie, take care. Take care.